Okay, we're back. This is Professor Paul Gruen from Manchester Community College uh, teaching Web 2 CSD 250. This happens to be the fall of 2016. Um, we'll see how long these videos last. Maybe some student in the future in 2020 will still be going through these with me virtually. Um, we are using Murex jQuery 2nd edition and there are 570 pages in this book and at the end of chapter 5 we will have completed plus the appendix a total of 205 pages and so that means we will be 36 percent the way through the book so we're making progress and that's exciting um, the good news is life starts to get easier for us. Chapter 2, we went through JavaScript Hell. And Chapter 3 and 4, Chapter 4, uh, 3, we talked about the DOM, and that was kind of fun. And we got to do JavaScript to manipulate and start to understand the DOM. And chapter four was just kind of that hardcore, you got to learn and how to understand and figure out your own methodology on debugging. And I was actually pretty impressed with the um, control shift I or uh, F12 key uh, in Chrome. It actually did a pretty good job. Some of you are using Aptana and NetBeans. Um, one of you is even using uh, Eclipse and put the Aptana plugin in. All of those are great great solutions to, to make it work. So um, that's good. Now, chapter five is introducing us to the reason why I picked this book over another book. And that becomes how easy jQuery is to use and implement. And there, um, Murek had a book on JavaScript that we could have used. And if you want to get into more details in the JavaScript language. Highly recommend purchasing the JavaScript book that Murex sells. <clears throat> but what I like here is now we're going to say, I don't have to do all that complex coding in JavaScript because jQuery did it for me already. Now, I am here at jQuery.com. And I'm going to go over a couple of things that the um, the book doesn't go over right now. So um, I'm going to just click on download jQuery. And then they have download the compressed version, download the uncompressed version. The difference between the two, and then they it looks like they even have a slim version. That's kind of new to me. I'm used to the min and the max. There is an upgrade guide if you're already using uh, jQuery. But um, the difference between the compressed and the uncompressed version is this. This is what the code looks like for the uncompressed version. And basically, you can see, and this is the, J, this is the jQuery set of plugins. This is all the code. Whoops. As you can see, I'm scrolling down. This is jQuery. jQuery is, in fact, JavaScript. But it's a set of libraries written in, in JavaScript that make JavaScript a heck of a lot easier to use. Now, that's the uncompressed version. The compressed version looks like that. Now, the reason the compressed version is actually better to have on your websites and to use on your websites is because the file size is actually smaller because it gets rid of all of the extra spaces, all of the extra uh, carriage returns, and just crunches it all up together. And you're not going to be manipulating or changing jQuery. Now, if you decide that, you know, I, I think I can make jQuery better, 
then what you would do is you would um, use the uncompressed version, start tweaking jQuery, and then submit your findings and your improvements to the to jQuery to the jQuery gods and see if it gets implemented in the next version. What most people do is they create extended jQuery plugins and jQuery libraries to use this. But we're not going to even come close to being there. So what we're going to do is so we don't need the uncompressed version. I'm going to download the compressed version. Uh, let's see. Boom. Did it download already for me? <laughs> nope. Okay, so. Download jQuery. Help. Why am I using jQuery? Okay, so basically what it's doing is opening up it's opening up the library for me. So I need notepad now. So what I would do that's this is the uncompressed version. Let's go to the compressed version. So when we go to download we're going to go to the compressed version. So now we're here. Now what we need to do is open up Notepad. And so we have a a new a new file for Notepad. Basically, this is where jQuery is living. I'm going to go control A, select all, control C, and then into here, control V. Now I have jQuery um, in Notepad, and I'm going to I'm going to take this file. As a matter of fact, what I need to do is here is my um, folders on my desktop that I'm using I, uh, for this class. And see Web2 Prof videos, and these are the uh, video the HTML files. I'm going to create. A little folder here so you would create a folder if you don't have one already called JavaScript so now I have a place to put jQuery so now what I'm going to do is just grab the name of this version of jQuery now I'm going to go file save as and in my JavaScript folder In my JavaScript folder, I am saving the actual name of the version of, J of jQuery I'm using. The book looks like it's using version 2 point something. My recommendation is downloading and using um, the most recent version of jQuery, be on the current one, but I'm actually going to show you two different ways to access jQuery. Um, so I'm going to save this. So now jQuery Here's my folder, and you can see I have a, a chapter 5 um, page ready to go. In my JS folder, there, there's um, jQuery. I don't need that anymore. The one thing you have to remember, though, is that um, you need to put that JS folder and jQuery out on your website. It needs to be wherever you are building your website. <laughs> now, if we look at the FAQs, so in the um, book, you have your student download files, and we have the book apps, chapter 5, and I'm looking at FAQs, and I got to the FAQ page. Here's the FAQ page in Chapter 5. If I right-click View Page Source, this line of code right here, where it says code.jQuery.com, jQuery 2.1.4, min, not the, the larger one, JS, that is how this book is 
accessing jQuery. It's going directly to the website, and you can do that. I'm going to copy that link, and I am going now, I am in my chapter 5, and I'm going to add that link, and now to my, my example. But what I want to do is I want to actually go to 3.1.1. And I can test and verify that I have a valid jQuery link by taking that, copying that page, and pasting it. Let's just go to Google. I can take that link that I've typed in and hit enter, and this is what I should see, and I do. So this is, by this line of code here, this is accessing jQuery. The other possible way is, in my JS folder, I have jQuery 3.1 min, so I can also copy this script. And instead of having to go all the way out to the internet, I am just going locally to my, the location of my jQuery code on my machine. And I don't need the HTTP. So that is, that second line of code is accessing jQuery locally. <coughs> both will work. You don't need both. <coughs> the one that is preferred, quite honestly, is the second one. But it puts the responsibility on you to make sure that jQuery is out on your website, that you've got a folder, and that it, it is in fact there and that you're mapping and passing out to the right location of jQuery. Why is the second one preferred over this one? The second one is preferred for two reasons. One, you have control, but more important, performance. What happens when you're actually putting something with the HTTP in there, that when somebody goes to your website, it's going to go to your website, find that page. That page is going to start to load up. And then when it gets to line 13 here, when it gets to line 13, it's going to go, oh, I have to go out to this website to then pull in and bring in the jQuery code versus I just have to be at my website and pick up the jQuery code that I already have and is here. So, um, but what I am not going to do is I am not going to um, include jQuery. You can in grab it yourself based on what I just did, and you can test it. But I, so I'm going to comment out the version of it that is using it locally. Now the reason for that, why, when I just said that this is the better way of doing it, is for transportability. I don't want any of my students to suffer through just in case they didn't get jQuery set up on your machines correctly. Both work when you're doing your own web development. You ideally should have J, a copy of that jQuery file, that min file, on your machine locally and then it will work okay so that basically we're set up to go let me clean up a couple of things here we don't need to look at jquery anymore um we may in fact be looking at that in a minute and murac okay so there's that okay you can see that i have my chapter five test example ready to go don't know what we're going to put in it yet but i'm sure we'll come up with something 
and I have my test 5 code in the wings ready to go. We see that jQuery is installed in my JS folder, <coughs> but we're not going to be using that, uh, and we understand why. Okay, it's time. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to go to here for that because we'll probably hit the student download stuff in a minute. Don't need that. Off to the races with jQuery. So I'm reading this book with you for the first time. Um, off to a fast start with jQuery. In this chapter, you'll see how jQuery makes JavaScript programming easier, and you'll learn how to work with wor learn working a subset of jQuery that'll get you off to a fast start. So basically, they're going to try to unfrustrate you after your chapter two experience. Page 158. In this introduction, we'll learn we will learn um, what jQuery is and how to include it in your applications. Well, we have already learned how to include it in our applications, and what jQuery is. Quite simply, in my opinion. It's all the stuff that everybody wished JavaScript was doing in the early days, and a group of people got together and made these other libraries, and then the floodgates opened, and there are tons of jQuery plugins. Um, most of the time, 99% of my students and students I've worked with over the years have to do little to no JavaScript or jQuery programming. But professor, why did you make me go through all of that stuff? Because by understanding the code, by understanding how some of this stuff works, that you can then easily implement and tweak and understand when things go wrong. We've already visited jQuery.com, and you can see here that at the time of the writing of this book, it, they were on version 2.0. 1.3. Um, we have gone out there just a minute ago and we we went out there and we saw we're now at 3.11 which is actually a really good sign that's telling us that jQuery is something that's here to stay. It's uh, definitely being maintained. It's not like it's and it's constantly getting updated, constantly getting improved, constant security, cross-browser compatibility, compliant with the newest version of CSS. It's definitely, um, if you are going to be doing web development professionally, and at the end of this, at the end of the web certificate program, you want to get a job doing web development, I strongly urge you <clears throat> to dig into the um, resources links that we've put together as a class on learning jQuery, understanding the DOM, and uh, jQuery plugins. Web development is not just HTML tags. Web development is not just Dreamweaver, drag and drop and make it look pretty. The interactivity and the usability of the web page, and especially in context of mobile, uh, using jQuery UI, using Node.js, and using AngularJS, and a lot of the other uh, jQuery libraries, that's where you will become more desirable as a as a web developer. It's the stuff under the hood. It's one thing to make it pretty, but it's another thing to make it work really sharp. <clears throat> um, what is jQuery? Page 158. Figure 51 summarizes uh, jQuery. It is free, open source library, provides dozens of methods for a common web features that make JavaScript programming easier. Beyond that, the jQuery functions are coded and tested for cross-browser compatibility. And what's really good there is, back in the olden days, um, things would work in Netscape, but they wouldn't work in Explorer. And 
they work really hard to make sure jQuery works across all browsers. There are just two reasons why jQuery is used more than 60% of the 1 million most visited websites today. Um, those are just two. Oh, beyond that, uh, jQuery functions are coded and tested for cross-browser compatibility, so they work in all browsers. So it's free, and it works in all browsers. That's why more than 60% of 1 million most visited websites today use jQuery. In fact, you think of jQuery as one of the four technologies that every web developer should know to use. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. But don't forget that jQuery actually builds on JavaScript. Um, page 159, jQuery offers dozens of selectors. Let's see, I think we're getting down to this next page jQuery offers dozens of selectors and events that make it easier to add JavaScript features to your website. Cross-browser compatibility, compliant with CSS, and a compressed library that loads quickly so it doesn't degrade performance. Notice that we had I showed you jQuery maximum, so it was readable, and then uh, min. So here is the, um, the FAQ application. And here's the HTML for the FAQ application. Let's pull that up in uh, Notepad. OK, um, you don't realize it, but I just took about a 15, 20 minute trying to figure out what I want to say next break. Because um, I was trying to figure out where the, the book was going with this, because it got confusing all of a sudden. Um, the you have already completed, did in chapter two, I think it was, the FAQ application. And, and you did it in JavaScript. Here is the HTML code for it using jQuery. Pretty straightforward, pretty much this close. And there is some CSS, um, the addition of the plus sign in that. I don't remember if that was in chapter two. Now here is the jQuery code that we're now using to make the FAQ page work. This jQuery code is a lot simpler and what it is doing, it's referencing methods within, um, this is JavaScript code slash jQuery code that's referencing the methods within the jQuery library that we're now adding to the page. Here's the page, and you have the page in your um, book apps, and you can see the references and stuff for it. Um, now, this is the code for jQuery UI. Notice here it says div ID equals accordion. That's all you need to do in the um, in your HTML, and then this is the JavaScript code for using the jQuery UI plugin. So what happens is we have JavaScript, JavaScript as a base, jQuery library on top of that, and now jQuery UI library on top of that. And the jQuery UI library, as you can see, is very, very simple and easy to use. Chapter 10 in this book. If you go to jQueryUI.com and do the quick download, I would recommend doing the stable download of right now it looks like 12.1. It will bring down everything you need. There are tons, and just spend spend a few minutes uh, taking a look at all of the widgets and all of the effects. Now, and what's really nice when you go to something like we've been playing with the accordion effect you can see the um, pages you can actually test how these work and there's different examples of each one and all you need to do is right click and take a look and view course uh, source the code. Now, what you do have to do is add in 
And here's the matter of fact what it says here. Here's a view source for the code. And then that's the code for the whole page that's making that widget work. And you can start to see these calls to these methods. Now notice here is that it's calling jQuery and then it's also calling jQuery UI. Remember I said JavaScript, jQuery, jQuery UI. This is where you want to end up for your web development is jQuery UI. And then on top of that, add additional jQuery UI plugins. That's where we're heading. So um, let's go back to here. So what we see now and what we've learned is we did the FAQ browser, we did the FAQ application in JavaScript. Painful. Take a look at it in jQuery. Way better, way simpler. The syntax is a little different and it takes a while to develop kind of that mindset of, of sleeping and dreaming in jQuery. And then we can see that that, and then now there's this thing called like here, one of the widgets within jQuery UI. I am not going to do any examples on this other than what I just showed you. Go out to jQueryUI.com. Again, if you're doing some web development and you want to make something look really cool, really fast, implement jQuery UI as soon as you can. Let's do it. I would love to see a couple of you do it for your CSD 250 page. And there's the code for jQuery UI. Typical plugins, data validation. There are jQuery UI validations. Remember all the if statements we had to write in JavaScript? Slideshows, carousels. There are plugins that are just out there and available. We've learned briefly about jQuery, jQuery UI, plugins, downloading jQuery. We already talked about that. Current versions, well, they're a little bit behind the signs. Um, We've already talked about including. This is how to include it once I've downloaded it to once I've downloaded it to my website, to my my um, my computer locally. That you would path it out. Remember, I put I cut and paste and I put jQuery into Notepad and I saved it with the right version name and I put it in a JS folder. Or I can get make it more transportable make it easy. Quite honestly, if you do it this way, it usually works and it's fast enough. And then, um, oh yeah, then th there's some interesting information on what is known as the Migrate plugin from um, C uh, CDN. And what the Migrate plugin does is basically uh, helps for backward compatibility to older browsers. I am not going to make that a requirement for this class. I think if you're doing serious uh, development for a lot of companies that you would probably need to add and be on top of the Migrate plugin. Um, syntax for jQuery selector basically is the dollar sign and what it is you're selecting. And let's see, is there an example of that here? That's the HTML. How to select elements by element ID class by, by element type ID or class. So here you can see right here the dollar sign quote P is saying give me all of the P tags. Give me the element that is called FAQ. Give me the element that has the class dot minus. So in jQuery what happens is you have these libraries and you can easily just say I want to do something to this thing or this set of things and you reference it um, by, by either the element type, the ID, or the class. How do I select elements by relationship? So at that point there, here's a good example. I want the FAQs, again, this is uh, jQuery code, the dollar sign parentheses is referencing the jQuery library. We're passing into that method the ID for FAQs, but I want to deal with the FAQs, the P tags. I want the next one. I want to deal with the H2 tag, the div tag within it. I want to deal with the UL, the list. So this allows us to get 
children attributes of a given element set in the DOM. So remember, back in chapter three, we said that JavaScript allows us to manip manipulate the DOM. And when we understand the relationship of the DOM, those elements, those pieces that they have tags and names, and there's this hierarchy, and we saw a chart of a simple hierarchy, that what we can do is we know where in the hierarchy we are that we can then call jQuery to then manipulate it the way that uh, jQuery library is, is wanting to run. How to code multiple selectors. I'm going to pause and get caught up and see what page we're on. Okay, I see that as I was flipping through the pages that by now you should have read page 164 and 165. If not, get caught up because that's basically what I just talked about the last couple of slides. Talked about the jQuery selectors on page 166 and 167. And that gives the detailed thing of what I just kind of breezed through real quick with the slides. Common jQuery methods, uh, and that's basically getting um, the text elements, getting um, the children of, of a text element, getting the value, finding which element I'm looking for or what that text value is, maybe the properties of it, maybe I want to change the color of something. Uh, and then there's some examples of code on page 169. Page 170, we're talking about using events, and that's very similar to um, very similar to what we did in early J uh, JavaScript, where an event like clicking a button, we could call something. Okay, so I think I figured out what I want to do next, and what I want us to do is strip down and take a look at the FAQ application, and in that process, what I'm hoping to do is you'll kind of understand and look at how do I dissect the page and how do I dissect um, the code behind it. And we're going to take the FAQ place and make sure we understand the pieces of it and what it's doing. And then after that, I'm going to see if I can put together one simple little uh, event handler on our own. Not sure what it's going to do yet, but we'll come up with it. So here, this is um, from the book apps, chapter five and um, the jQuery FAQ plugin. Again, this is not using jQuery UI. If it was me, I would go directly to jQuery UI and tap in and learn that library, which you will in chapter 10. This is kind of old school. What's nice about the new UI one, the old one sucks away and all of this. So there's other cool things here. But again, it's been a progression of time. What I did in the sample code was I took the CSS and I minimized it into one simple block. I have given you two examples of how to call jQuery. One, one is the call out to the um, jQuery website. The other is doing it locally. I decided to include locally, uh, use my, my local version of it. And what I'm going to do is actually Probably from here on out, I might be giving you um, complete zip files of my whole library. And at the end of this, you'll have every single chapter. And here is the um, ready event that the book was talking about, um, the ready event handler. The event handler runs when the DOM is ready. In other words, when the page is ready, this thing is ready to go. And um, it's talking about that on page 168, 169, up to 171. And then the click is basically, this is the call to, um, to the method in jQuery when you click on a given uh, element in the DOM. So this is all the code that is being used. And notice here, that this is the reference to the FAQ's um, tag, the FAQ's div on the on the page, and what I need, what the when you're kind of looking at a code block that you're given, you really need to kind of read through it and say, oh, okay, what you, what things are pointing to somewhere, what things are referencing something. So I see FAQs here, and I can do a Control F and I'll find that there's FAQs here. So if I want to 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually I'm going to kind of change this all around, change the change a few things in it so that we can understand that these things work. So right now my page is working fine under the term FAQs. If I was to change this main ID, the ID of the to to my story. Save it. Refresh the page. Now it's not working anymore. The reason it's not working is that this code, which is ready to execute, is expecting the FAQ's ID to be um, a, a click event happening. There is no FAQ ID. So if I change this to my story, now we can see a relationship between my story right there and my story in the code that's being called. Um, and then I'm going to change the title a little bit, a little bit about me. So what's really important is when we're looking at a web page that we start to understand where things are. So jQuery's FAQ was right here in this FH1 tag. If I save it, refresh it. Okay, so now the good news is, as I'm learning about this page, I can see that I know where I am, so I can start figuring out where things are happening. Now I see that I have a title here with a plus sign, a pl title here with a plus sign, title, and then I click on these things. So they're having very similar behaviors, but with different words. So now... I know I was right here where a little bit about me. I see this H2 tag. What is jQuery? What is jQuery? I come down a little bit. I see another H2 tag. Why is jQuery becoming so popular? Why is jQuery becoming so popular? Which is harder to learn? Which is harder to learn? So I'm seeing that as well. So now I can start to understand that whoever designed this page knew that there was kind of a method to their madness. So I'm changing this from FAQs to my story. I could say something like my family. And I can come down here and I'm going to go to the next title. Um, and instead of just my, I'm just going to say family. education, and then I come down to the next H2 tag, and I'm going to say hobbies. So I'm going to save that, refresh the page, and now we say those words. I've got a typo somewhere. Uh, look at that. I forgot. I inadvertently deleted a um, greater than sign. Now we have that. So now we have family, education, and hobbies. This is how most web developers using jQuery, the type of coding that they're doing. They find a jQuery plugin, something maybe in jQuery UI, or another plugin like some that we found, and you figure out how it works. Strip it down to the bare minimum, and then build up to it and make it work for you. And if you learn and understand the various um, parameters that you can pass and the settings that you pass as you figure out, oh, here's how it works here and it's in red or it's in blue or it's bigger and stuff like that, then all you're really doing most of the time is maybe changing some references within the, the jQuery code and you're changing the actual content that you want to show. So family, and I can now put, you know, um, some text, have been 
married to Donna for about for 15 years and we have a daughter Kira um, who is working on her master's degree. Yes, she's actually, she's only 13 years old and she's a, uh, Kira is a, um, a genius. No, uh, Kira is from Donna's first marriage, but I'm definitely dad. So um, Kira is working at Central right now. My education, um, let's see. Degrees. So I have a um, an AS, AS in comp computer science at computer science is Nantuck community. College BA Biblical Lit. <laughs> I'm going to just pause this so I can. Okay, I didn't want to bore you and have you just watch me type, it's like kind of watching uh, soup water boil. But the point is that what I've done is I have understood where these h2 tags were i've understood the sub points and the div tags underneath that i could then tweak them and add the content that i needed to to make my faq page now something more relevant to what my website's about refresh the page a little bit more about me there's family there's my education and here's some hobbies that I'm involved in. Uh, notice a typo. Let's fix that. Control S. Refresh. And around the house. So what we've seen is there's a relationship between the HTML and the calls to JavaScript and the calls to the methods in jQuery. The key in this sample here is that main ID, this main div tag called my story has H2 tags to it. And that that H2 tag here, notice underneath there, there's a div tag underneath there. There's a child div tag to the H2. So there's a relationship between the H2 tag and that next div tag. Notice here, there's the H2 tag for education and there's an A link. It's actually made it a link to make it clickable, but this dollar, this pound sign says, "Don't go anywhere. Just allow clicking on the word education." So that's how it made it a hot link. If you would have just put education within an H2 tag, it wouldn't have become a clickable item. So by having the ahref tag here, it made it a clickable item. And then the jQuery is automatically saying, find the div tag right below that, and then turn it on or turn it off. And then so what we're doing here is we're then turning it on and turning it off. It's creating a class called minus, and, um, and basically it's either going to hide it, and then this is a jQuery reference to saying find the next tag and hide it. That's that div tag below it. Find the next tag and show it. So this is opening and closing the door based upon whatever tag I am above it. So um, I'm just curious. I want to kind of prove my, let's prove this theory right and wrong. Let's take this div tag here. And I'm going to add it to it into the middle. And I'm just going to add it above. And I'm going to say new div. 
So now I have a div tag right under family, and I have the div tag that was already under family before. So I just squeezed a div tag in there. Let's save that. Let's go out to the page, refresh the page, click it. Notice that new div tag is showing, not the family div tag, because the jQuery code is saying, I found, um, I, you clicked on here, but I'm going to then show you the next div tag. I'm going to either open or close it. Now let's even take this a little further and let's get rid of that A tag. If I just make an H2 tag, save it, refresh the page. Well, that's interesting. It actually still made family clickable because it's H2. So that's, um, that is not the case in, in all situations, which is funny. Um, I did save it, yep, and I did refresh it. So um, that's actually good, which actually means you don't need to have, you don't, we don't need to have that in there to make it work. I wonder if the browser issue, if it would fail in other browsers. So I want to save that. And it looks like that's working fine. Good. It makes it simpler and better. I am going to delete this simple code out of here. It's not going to be in the set that you get. And um, you're going to have to type that in yourself. I'm going to leave. Um, let's see. We got this. We got family degrees. And here's hobbies. I'm going to leave the, uh, the A reference in the code for hobbies just as a point of reference. Okay, so we've talked, we got the ready event where the page is loaded. Basically, that's like the on load. Remember in the earlier ones where we had to load up everything first to make it work? The ready event is the, similar to that in jQuery. Boom, terms. Okay, now at this point, I'm not gonna go through all of the, um, the email list, but if you take a look at Page 172, there's the email list application. Pull that up from the book. A um, little more de uh, details on page 176 and 177 on the various selectors. Um, and then a lot of the uh, jQuery methods. 178, 79, useful methods, clicking, error, mouse over, hover. And... Um, then the FAQs application a little more, the image swap. So now what's really nice is they're going to give you an example of the image swap now done in jQuery. And so you'll see how it's simpler. And page one, that's like 186, 87, 88. Take a look at the JavaScript code now for, for the, the image swap. A lot simpler. And you can start to see that the syntax... All the stuff you learned in Chapter 2 on how to do it in JavaScript, you almost don't need to know it because they've now created the syntax for jQuery. So you have to start to get to understand that dollar sign parentheses and that this is jQuery speak. This is jQuery speak that are talking to the methods that are in the jQuery library, which you have brought in by calling that, that jQuery uh, code that you've downloaded. So uh, on page 191, notice that there are certain things that are highlighted. And let's, I think there's a page up here. But, hello, FAQs. Okay, so all the stuff that is being highlighted in the book, these are the pieces, the tools that are needed uh, for jQuery to work. And this is, this is, these are the calls to the jQuery. This is the jQuery syntax that is replacing the same stuff that we were doing in um, JavaScript back in Chapter 2. Notice here uh, for the rollover application that that is, I'm going to pull that one up. Let's find here. Here's the rollover application. There's the rollover JavaScript. There's the... So now, um, as I roll over, that's an event. 
that then we can do an image swap with. So there's the rollover. View the page source. It's using CSS. It's using the jQuery library. And then the JavaScript code is this rollover JS. I can we can view this code right here. So that is the jQuery code that is being used. It's an external file called um, an external file called rollover JS. Now what's really nice is you could just create this rollover JS, put this in your JS folder, and you can now use it whenever you need to on it. You don't have to put this code into your main page but it now becomes available to you that you have rollover JS has, has a um, external, external piece of code that's available that you can call from any, uh, from any page you would create. Image swap, there's an image swap JS file. So these become toolboxes that you could actually call whenever you need to use it. And here it's using the image list. Let's take a look at the image swap. So here you can, so this, we've done this, but we did it in JavaScript. Now the book is showing you how to do the same thing in jQuery a lot simpler. So the point is back in chapter two, when you were in total panic mode, you were worried that you had to learn how to code in JavaScript. You don't to be successful in this class, and you really don't to be successful in using jQuery and jQuery plugins. You kind of need to understand how the coding works, and you need to understand now the syntactical um, way that coding works in relationship to jQuery, and the more you understand it, the better. But for the average web develop, de developer, you need to understand how to pull in a plugin use the code, reference the code, and tweak the highlights. So um, take some time, go through the rest of the chapter, uh, pull up the various pieces. In the exercise, you have an email list function and an image rollover and develop a book list application. Um, the answers, like always, are there and available. Spend as much time as you can um, before you pull up the solutions version of the page. Like I said, it is purely okay that at the end of the day for each of those exercises that you, um, if you have to fall back to the answers or look at the answers to figure out what you did wrong, that's okay, submit it, but just tell me that in the handout sheet. Let me know that uh, excuse me, I, 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 you know, that you did this, this, and this, couldn't get it to work, and that you relied on the answer sheet. We are doing a whole lot of stuff in a very short time, and that um, it's more about learning and seeing how to do it right so you can refer to it in the future. I am not, this class is not trying to turn you into a hardcore jQuery JavaScript developer that you would be building these tools from scratch. There's a couple of you in this class that are wanting to do computer programming at a more detailed level and there's a couple those of you would want to dig into the language deeper and say man what type of jQuery plugin could I create that could then get out there and that other people could use that I could provide you're, a, you're the small percentage in this class, and this class is not catering to you, except to the point that um, more than welcome any deeper expansions that you want to add to the class and add to your own personal experience here. Okay, um, we're hitting, getting close to one hour of listening to me ramble about Chapter 5, so you're probably ready to call it a day, and I need to see about doing chapter six. I'd like to get that one done today, so that's available. Okay, have a great day, and um, see you online.